you know, something that I do for myself sometimes is if I'm thinking about that reward and it's coming towards whether it might be go for lunch or go for a coffee or whatever it might be, I think about what about if I can just do one more call or, you know, yeah. um, do send one more email or whatever it might be, just mm. get that, the in into that habit of doing a little bit more before you take on or, you know, capture that reward. Why not? We talked about this just recently about doing one more. You talked about the extra 10% or doing one more. You know, there's a guy who's a, a great real estate agent uh, in Sydney. He's got the 31 minute challenge, not a 30 minute challenge, a 31 minute challenge. You know, we talked about from a sales call perspective, if your goal is to do 10 sales calls, do an 11th. You know, you just never know. I use the example of, you know, where I said to my father, who was driving me around and we were looking for work for me as a young bloke. And, and, and I said, no, I'm tired. And dad said, do, let's do one more. One more, and that one more is where uh, I, I met my wife, uh, got into a, a job, uh, and obviously my life uh, would have been incredibly different had I have not gone and done the one more. So the power of doing one more, it's amazing. You just never know what the possibilities are. We talked about the example with Gary V, you know, doing, uh, doing that one more, um, you know, receiving a, a listener's call, and it fundamentally changed that girl's life, right? And I can't recall her name, but it's an amazing uh, you know, episode of Ask Gary V. And so, yes, it's almost, a, but, but Luke, this whole thing is around hacking the mind, playing tricks on your mind, right? Because your mind wants to keep you safe. It would much prefer you sat down and watch Netflix, quite frankly. It really, really would, because you would be, in, you would be safe. Right? It doesn't want you to go and push into, uh, out of your comfort zone, because that's awkward. That's uncomfortable. That feels yucky. Right? It wants you to be safe and just sit there and watch Netflix and be happy and, 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 and eat ice cream or do whatever. So you've got to challenge yourself, right? You're building the muscle. You know, we so love those technical to... terms, Tony. Yucky. Yeah. Oh, look, I've, I've studied for years to come up with those terms. So I'm... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Go back into your morning routine. Just like My morning, morning... On, your, on your morning routine, it looks like you've probably just got a call come through right there. But um... morning, 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 morning routine is, is all around um, uh, meditation, uh, so meditation, just sitting quietly, uh, breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth, do that for a couple of minutes. Uh, it's all around affirmations, the things that you say to yourself. You know, I often say, be careful what you say to yourself because your mind's listening, right? And I say that from a negative standpoint, be careful of the things that, that I think I can, I might be able to, maybe I can. Uh, I don't like doing that. I don't want to do that. That's hard. That's challenging. All those types of things. They aren't my morning routine, but I'm using that as the example. My morning routine's all around the positive affirmations of I have the ability to do whatever it is that I choose. You know, no one is going to ruin uh, what is going to be a magnificent day. And I keep saying, I hold it up, but I say it out loud as well. So it's not just about thinking things. It's about speak them out aloud because then your subconscious hears you. Right? And you try it yourself. I quite often will look at myself in the mirror, you know, before I go into a, it might be a meeting or a call or a presentation, you know, so it might be, a, you know, before I do a presentation, I might have my, you know, my, my not last minute sort of, you know, nervous little pit stop before I go and do a big speech. And I'll look at myself in the mirror and I'll say, you know, you've got this, mate. You've got this. You can do this. You've worked, you've worked hard to do this, right? And so I say all these things to myself to pump me up. So uh, affirmations uh, is another one. Visualization. It's absolutely key. You know, our minds can't distinguish. I'm getting rained on now. Our minds can't distinguish between what's real uh, and what's imagined. So the more that you can light something up in your mind that's in front of you, then the more you'll be able to bring that into your world. So, uh, so they're just a number of things that I do as part of my morning routine. And I do it because I set my day up right. You know, I set my day up right. And then I'm doing all this stuff before my family wakes up. So when my family's woken up, my morning routine's done. Gosh, the rain's coming in now. My, my, uh, my, my, um, we're just going to take this mobile. Just bear with me because I'm getting rained on. Um, but that, Mate, but that, you, that's, you should be able to deal with all corner conditions. While you say that, while you do that and move, yeah, you've got the yeah, mother that comes yeah. on and says, there's a quote. The lazy man said, there is a line outside. I'm not going outside today. So it's all excuses or what he says is all bad excuses. So, you know, you've got to think about that lazy nature that you have and maybe change that a little bit. And may, like Tony said earlier, start hacking the mind on these things. Take that one extra call. Um, do that one extra minute, one extra sales call, whatever it might be. Uh, Ken says, the spa definitely revived me, gives me the ability to do it over again today. Having six weeks off, I'm, I'm not match fit. So... You know, if you do have a holiday like Ken has and you've been away for six weeks or you a week or whatever, you know, it is a little bit tougher to get back into that routine and maybe you've got to get back into it a little bit slower and, and really, you know, move back into things day by day by day and not rush in to go 
back in and you can actually, oh, you'll be at 100% on day one. Again, it goes back to what we said earlier about having that patience um, with whatever you're doing, but, you know, just working on it constantly and you will improve day by day by day. Uh, well, progress, and, pro you know, progression is better than perfection. You know what I mean? So we talk about this often. It's about just do something. If you've done nothing, use Ken's example. If he's done nothing for six weeks, that's awesome. You're entitled to a break. Uh, he works incredibly hard. I don't know him, but I hear stories through you and obviously through Facebook. Uh, but you're entitled to a break. You know, we, we all need time to recharge. But then uh, when you start back, like you said, progression is better than, than uh, perfection. So if you've done nothing, if you just do something, Right, and I talked uh, about this regarding the the 66 day uh, challenge. Don't do 66 sit ups if you've done zero sit ups for a very long time. Don't even kid yourself, because what will happen is you'll do 66 sit ups on day one. It'll take all your effort, and you won't be able to walk for the next week. Right. So if you've done no sit ups, just start with one. You know, if you on day one do one sit up or do one push up or or run for 100 meters. And you say, but on day two, I'm going to do a second sit up or a second push up. I'm going to run for 200 meters or whatever it is. Guess what happens at the end of the 66 days? You are doing 66 sit ups. You are doing 66 push ups. And you've done it in a nice, moderated and gradual approach. And you look back at the end of the 66 days, you go, oh my gosh, I didn't think that would ever be possible. But I did mm. it because I started off small and I just gradually, gradually did it. Whereas people want to go, again, instant gratification from zero to a gazillion dollars. And when they don't get there, it's like, oh, my God, this sucks. And I, I, it's not for me. And this is a load of crap. And I'm going to go and do something else. Whereas if you just stick with it, methodically, 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 guess what happens? You create phenomenal success for yourself with whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. Uh, really interesting for Ken, actually. Um, he was, during that time, even though he was on holidays, he's still engaging his audience. He was doing draws each day of, you know, uh, some free vouchers for his ice cream, uh, you know, for his ice creams when he gets back home and gets back into the truck and then drives those drives those streets around the Wollongong area. So for him, engaging his audience on a constant basis, yeah, he was working during that time, but not on a physical sense, but more of a, you know, in, in a social media sense. Uh, so, you know, if you're away on holidays, maybe you can still do those things like engaging your audience like Ken has been doing. So big shout out to Ken doing some of those things that really elevating. And on the subject of ice creams, Greg's just come on. He said, just eat one more ice cream. What I do, do Greg. I think it's magnificent. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Ken also says, yes, Tony, we all need more positive thoughts plants the seed in our brains. Absolutely. Yep. Sean says, always have multiple goals to keep motivated and moving after you reach one. So, you know, I, I guess then, you know, once you do reach that goal, like Sean is saying, or you have multiple strat uh, multiple goals, then that's great. But if you do reach that goal, think about what is, what is next. Because often with, with people, it's like, oh, I want to go and run a marathon. Then they get into it. It's like, once they've run the marathon, then that's it then they actually stop. And I've heard so many people not run for a year after that. Yeah, so because it's, it, hard, it's hard to start, right? And so my, I was going to say that by all means, you want to have uh, continual goals, but perhaps you think about the next goal before you finish the first one. So you might be at the 80% mark. And again, there's no exact science around this, right? But to that exact point, it's like, well, you know, don't wait until you finish the marathon and then sit at home for a few weeks and go, what am I going to do next? And then it's like, you know what? Oh, sort of I've lost the groove a bit. You know what I mean? That's very hard to get back into it. Whereas you might be thinking, oh, I've gone and done a marathon. Maybe I'm going to do another marathon. Right? A marathon's a big effort. Maybe Tony, whatever I'm that's probably something... thinking about the next goal while I'm doing the marathon. <laughs> yeah, but, but, that's, but that's my point. My point is that you're not, when, when we do, and this happens with sports people all the time, they reach the, the summit and they have nothing after the summit and they then find themselves into an enormous amount of depression and sadness and upset because they haven't got that something beyond the summit to look forward to. And there's another summit and another summit, but they haven't stopped and thought about that. Right. Well, and what so about the Chicago Bulls coach? He actually themed each year of um, the championship runs that they had uh, through, you know, the period of Michael Jordan's career. And yep. for them, once they win a championship, there's so many teams that can't repeat it the next year. Mm. Uh, they were able to get a hat trick of a victory. So six in total twice. Mm. So they, Correct. they repeated that three P twice. So it was amazing to be able to have a, such a you know, huge uh, uh, repeat of success each and every year. Uh, and that, that requires a massive mental strength 
uh, mindset strength for not only you as an individual, but look at look at the whole team and the coach leading that team as well. We've got Giovanni, uh, Tony, Donna, and Arik also coming on for this Sunday mindset session as well. So great audience. Thanks for the kind words, says Ken. Uh, Arik says, plant the seeds and eat out. Enjoy ice cream and grow. <laughs> I do. I thank like you. Th th thank you. I love love the ice cream. So thank you. Uh, so so mate, what so what are we talking about today? Meaning, meaning, meaning. What, what we're changing what, what, the meaning. So if we get into that for a moment, the first point was around we're half an hour in, which is great. <laughs> uh, and um, what it, uh, I guess you know when you're thinking about changing the meaning, what is about for you now? What is working? What is not working? And is there happiness? I don't know if you can tackle all those three at the once. Oh my, oh, my, oh, my gosh, you've thrown a lot at me. So, firstly, we're right, going... Where is it for you now? And then what's working and what's not working, really? Uh, so, for me specifically, so where am I at? So, I've, I've just released... Oh, the, no, just uh, in general for people, really, Oh, Tony. for people, for people, yeah. sure, for people. So, here's the thing, right? So, people get caught up in the What about us, right, Tony? Oh, it's, it's not? I must be on the wrong channel. Sorry. No, yeah. <laughs> no bloody joking. So, so meaning being, you can create whatever meaning you want, right? And the most common example uh, of a meaning is a glass uh, that's either half full or half empty with water, right? It's got 50% of water in it and it's either half full, meaning that you're looking at it from an optimistic point of view or it's half empty, meaning you're looking at it from a pessimistic point of view. You can change whatever meaning that you want. This idea came out of um, uh, the latest um, uh, book that I've just written around dealing with real estate agents. And I talked about change the meaning. The reason I say it is because a lot of people with real estate agents are fearful, right? They're scared of dealing with real estate agents. They've created this story in their mind and you can change that meaning in an instant, right? So the opposite of being fearful or scared of a real estate agent is to love a real estate agent, love dealing with real estate agents, but not just do that as, as in a fake it till you make it, do it as in a understand why you need to love real estate agents, how they can benefit you. And that's just one example, right? But you can apply to everything, right? Everything has a also, meaning. Tony, also, Tony, what they're, that, what they're about, right? Love what they're about and have an understanding of what they're about. That's what, what I'm saying. Why, so I understand why. You know, what drives the, that individual to be who they are and what they're about. So Correct. it comes from a, you know, a number of different areas and I'll let you continue on with that. No, no, it's, it's all about understanding the why. So in the real estate example, understand the, the, the why, how they can help you, what benefit they have for you. When you stop and think about that, then you start to change your meaning as opposed to being fearful and scared of this person and, and wanting to avoid them at all costs. It's like, hang on a second, they can actually benefit me in my goals. So all this stuff starts with your why, your what, and your belief. You know, so your why being your reason, your what being your goal, and then the, the belief being, I believe that I can do this stuff, right? So you change the meaning. You can change your meaning around anything, right? So, so different people come at things from different perspectives the whole time, the whole time. And so uh, Tony Robbins talks about focus, meaning and do what you focus on what's the meaning you give it and what do you do so take for example coronavirus coronavirus let's let's focus on coronavirus what's the meaning some people go uh, oh my gosh that's devastating the health uh, issues the the economic issues it's devastating uh, other people and so as a result of that what do they do they live in fear they live with anxiety and they do nothing other people go yeah that's bad look i, I don't for a moment um i don't for a moment downplay the, the health uh, issues, people are dying for goodness sake, right? So it's enormous health issues, there's enormous economic issues. But the meaning is, well, hang on a second, the most common excuse I get as a coach from my clients is I have no time. So now all of a sudden, if you are doing less work, maybe you're working from home, you, you're not commuting, uh, maybe you've, you've lost a job, whatever it might be, you have an enormous amount of time, enormous amount of time. So now it's what am I gonna do with that time? So it's focus, meaning, do. Coronavirus, same thing. Some people look at it with fear and anxiety. Others go, hey, that's not bad. That's not good. It's, it's in fact, it's bloody terrible. But what can I do about it? And what can I do moving forward? Opportunity. Um, you know, I, I guess in people in those sort of situations that they've actually got the time, then are they finding other excuses, Tony? They are. 100% they are. You know, and, that, and that's the thing, right? It's, uh, it's just, I just love human behavior and i know you do too mate it just fascinates me that people sit there and, and people sit there and say i've got no time i've got no time i've got no time now they've got an enormous amount of time it's like oh yeah but i, I don't quite understand that i need to research that and i don't really and it's like it's just bullshit it's all bullshit right so it's about get clear on what you want get off your ass and get into it
because Absolutely. honestly, it's just it's just stories. They're just stories that we we make. And hey, I have been there. You know, I have been there up until probably five years ago. I told myself, and still tell myself occasional stories, but nowhere near the stories that I used to tell myself. Yeah, right? I'm, it's, I, I'm also about my own human behaviour and how I react and how I, yeah, how I interact in different yeah. situations. Like by by no means do Tony and I have this perfection around what we're doing. So just to let you know, people see. <laughs> You know, people see some things on social media. They see us talking about, you know, as gurus, because we are gurus, right, Tony? <laughs> and, you know, we talk about these things on a, on a constant basis. But we're, this is us working on ourselves. This is us serving, obviously, other people. But it is also us working on ourselves. The more we talk about these things, this is some of our daily actions and back into our daily mindset work. This is us talking about mindset. When we're talking about it, it's going to help us a lot more. Maybe then even that it helps you guys that are out there. So what you want to be doing is doing something similar. What are your conversations like with people? Are they about some of the mindset work that you can do for yourself personally? How are you influencing other people? Um, not by their advice that you're giving them, but by the actions that you're taking. And what, you know, we are big ones on this. But what kind of actions are we taking? Are we practicing? what we preach yes we're not going to get it right every single time and we're going to you know have our ups and down moment we're going to have a roller coaster in during our lives but how can we get on back on track that little bit quicker each time instead of taking a day or two days or dwelling on things for a week you know we're probably you know in that instant or you know within a, you know it might be a couple of hours or a couple of minutes in certain situation but less and less dwelling on things and this, you know, social media is a big point in that. I had a, a friend of mine actually put up a post, go through an experience with a colleague from work and be, you know, um, really struggling for 24 hour period. But mm. when I see that sort of thing on social media these days, as opposed to maybe five years ago, I'll mm. probably deal with that like that, like in an mm. instant. And it yeah. doesn't really affect me. I kind of get disappointed by what people do put out there, but then I'm just like, well, okay, they're telling their story. They're telling their perspective. So, you know, this is all about changing that meaning for you with each and every uh, practice that you go through in your life. 100%, Luke. And like you said, we, we are far from, from perfect. You know, I have had 2020 for me. The first half has been arguably the most challenging six months of my life. Not, nothing to do with COVID, plenty of other personal things and financial things going on. The other thing was I was recently at a property event in Brisbane and uh, I, I have a, a massive fear bordering on phobia of heights. And, uh, and I have to get over that. And last year I was given a gift of doing a skydive and I chickened out, you know, I just didn't, it beat me. It honestly beat me. And, uh, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to do an indoor skydive uh, as a way to um, soften me or get me, ease me into it, I suppose, not soften me, but ease me into it. So I'm well, happy to share. Those, you're taking those baby steps, right? Yeah, 100%. Uh, I'm, 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 you know, because I didn't take any steps, right? So I sit here and talk about, you know, progression, beats perfection, all those sorts of things. And I didn't take any, I didn't jump out of a plane and it, and it beat me, you know. Now I'm not going to let it beat me forever, but it did beat me. And so now I'm doing something that's, uh, that's a step towards that. Uh, and this is how I'm dealing with that. So that's an extreme example for me. But you're right, Luke, uh, we're, we're, we're all human. You know, we all have our own human frailties, but it's about constantly challenging yourself to be better today than you were yesterday and better tomorrow than you are today. And if you live with that mantra, if you live with that mantra of just do one more today than you did yesterday and tomorrow do one more than you did today, then you will be phenomenally successful. You will be 365 times better off over the course of a year if you just do one extra thing each and every day. David says, try not to create the meaning from uh, humiliation or and rejection from others. It's not easy, but it's possible. Uh, yeah, but, that, but, that's, but that's the thing. That's what, so meaning comes from wherever you want it to come from. So that's one example. So if you've got that particular meaning, then it's about how do I go and change that meaning? And again, I talked about the, the fear, the opposite of fear. Right? The opposite of fear is love. So instead of being fearful of something, so I need to learn to love jumping out of a plane. Now, I'm not there yet. In fact, I'm nowhere near that yet, right? But I need to learn to love that. And when I do that, uh, trust me, it'll be all over social media and it'll be a, a quite a, an overwhelming day for me personally. But, but, but it's about um, you've got to love something, right? So it's about find the opposite meaning. You know, instead of blaming something or blaming people, acceptance. There's a lot of blame going on in the world right now. What about acceptance? That's the opposite of that, right? So, so it's all around 
um, you know, taking responsibility as well. That's another one. I, mate, Take- I, look, I, I'm at, obviously I'm up in Queensland, so if you do jump out of a plane in the coming weeks or something, I could be around for that. So I'll make the effort. We'll, cert- we'll, cert- we'll certainly do- going to make the effort. Well, we'll certainly do the indoor one uh, in the next few weeks, mate. So, um, so we're definitely doing that. Uh, let, let's just start with that. That in itself, mate. I, mate, I'm I'm scared to do high jump. Oh, mate, I'm going to be there just for the video. This is going to be I mean. great. 